a mutarone induced thyroid dysfunction a i t thyroid dysfunction both hypo and hyperthyroidism is a common complication of a meogarone therapy due to direct effects of the drug on the thyroid as well as its high iodine content Transient changes in thyroid function tests often occur in euthyroid individuals treated with a meodorone. While most patients remain euthyroid during a meodorone therapy, the clinical effects of a meodorone on thyroid function in any individual are dependent upon underlying thyroid status and dietary iodine intake. Patients with underlying autoimmune thyroid disease are at highest risk for a meodorone induced hypothyroidism. There are two types of amiodarone induced thyroid dysfunction. In type 1, there is increased synthesis of thyroid hormone, excess iodine provides the increased substrate, whereas in type 2, there is excess release of T4 and T3 due to a destructive thyroiditis, direct toxic effect of amiodarone on the thyroid gland. For patients with type 2A, I, T, the hyperthyroid phase may last from several weeks to several months and is often followed by a hypothyroid phase and then recovery. Patients with nodular goiter are at increased risk of type 1 amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis A, I, T. The excess iodine from the amiodarone provides increased substrate, resulting in enhanced thyroid hormone synthesis and hyperthyroidism. Destructive thyroiditis type 2A. I, T, typically occurs in patients with no underlying thyroid disease. In iodine-sufficient areas, amiodarone-induced hypothyroidism appears to be more common than hyperthyroidism. In contrast, amiodarone-induced hyperthyroidism, usually type 1A, I, T, is more common than hypothyroidism in iodine-deficient regions. The diagnosis and treatment of amiodarone induced hypothyroidism is the same as for other patients with primary hypothyroidism. Euthyroidism should be restored by replacement with thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone, in doses larger than normal, is often required. Should amiodarone be discontinued? When deciding whether to discontinue amiodarone, the following should be considered. Amiodarone may be necessary to control a life-threatening arrhythmia. Since the half-life of elimination from the body is approximately 100 days, there is no immediate benefit to stopping amiodarone. Amiodarone appears to ameliorate hyperthyroidism by blocking T4 to T3 conversion, beta-adrenergic receptors, and possibly T3 receptors. Stopping amiodarone might actually exacerbate hyperthyroid symptoms and signs. It is often difficult to distinguish between the two types, and some patients may have elements of both. The 24-hour radioiodine uptake is typically not able to distinguish between types 1 and 2A. I. T. Technetium 99 meters, Sestamibi imaging, where available, or color flow Doppler sonography may be the best ways of distinguishing between the two types of A. I. T. In patients who develop A. I, T in whom the amiodarone was prescribed for life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias, and is effective, we suggest continuing the amiodarone and simultaneously treating the hyperthyroidism. In patients who develop A, I, T in whom the amiodarone was not prescribed for life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias, or is ineffective, we suggest discontinuing the drug. This should only be done in consultation with the patient's cardiologist if alternative antiarrhythmics can be used. For the treatment of type 1A, I, T, we suggest tenamides as our first choice of therapy, whether amiodarone is continued or discontinued. For the treatment of type 2A, I, T, we suggest glucocorticoid therapy as our first line drug, whether amiodarone is continued or discontinued. We typically start with prednisone, 40 to 60 mg per day, and continue therapy for 1 to 2 months before tapering, to avoid exacerbations of hyperthyroidism. Patients with type 1 or type 2 A, I, T who are refractory to medical therapy should be treated by thyroidectomy. 
when balancing the risk of a surgical procedure during careful cardiovascular monitoring with the risk of several months of unmonitored and uncontrolled thyrotoxicosis, the advantages of surgery in this setting become compelling. If the mechanism of the hyperthyroidism is uncertain or the patient appears to have mixed type 1 and type 2 A, I, T, a combination of prednisone, 40 mg per day, and methimazole, 40 mg per day, is reasonable initial therapy. Thank you.